Hi there, and welcome to this short uh, explanatory guide on how to turn your scanned line art into a um, Photoshop project file that you can color in. Um, I have here a map that I'm working on. It's the circus tent, hopefully you can tell by looking. It's freshly scanned in with blemishes and all. You can see some of the drafting lines. You can see the, the scanning bed off to the side. Uh, I've just scanned it in, I've loaded it into Photoshop, and that's it there. Um, so first of all, quick and dirty way to start colouring in underneath is to find the one layer that you have, probably called background. This is where your line art exists. You want to unlock that or otherwise turn it into a raster layer, which we can see here. And you, all you have to do is open up the layer mode, switch it to multiply, and then anything we do underneath is going to be underneath. Multiply just means essentially it's treating the white as transparent and the, the darks as not transparent, opaque. Yeah. So that's the quick and dirty way. There is a better way though. Uh, what you want to do is start with a canvas right and i like to set the um measurement mode to inches and just because it's easier one inch per grid square easy to figure out so we want like a 32 by 44 inch canvas and i recommend 300 dpi for printing for this particular map i, I think i'm doing 150 dpi um, you can play with that. That just means how many pixels are going to be in each inch. So if you have a powerful computer, you can bump it up to 300 DPI. 300 DPI is plenty, but if you really want to, you could go up to 600. Uh, anyway, important bits is just measure it out by inches and then set a DPI that your computer can handle. And then I'm pressing control apostrophe you know, with that key bind you can enable the photoshop grid and um which is handy but anyway once you have this canvas ready you just want to control a control c control v to copy your line art over and then we have it here in the nicely sized canvas and then you can control T to resize it as you will. Uh, and you can do the same old thing, set it to multiply and start coloring in if you like. But uh, take it at one step further, because I think when people ask me how to prepare their line art for coloring in, this is their true question. How can I clean up the blemishes and whatnot, get rid of the all the little imperfections. Um, and that's a pretty simple affair. You just want to create an exposure adjustment layer. And then with your exposure slider, just tweak it very slightly. You see, we've gone up like uh, 0.1. Uh, and that has made our draft lines disappear almost completely. Uh, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.2 will do it. And then if we still have things like this, we can just touch that off with the eraser, right? Or you can get fancy with like select color range and you can try and get rid of all the blue on the canvas. That's useful if, if for example, you do all of your drafting in a blue pencil. And then all of your permanent line art in black ink makes it much more simple to get rid of your draft lines because you can use select color range and you can select by cyan or blue or red. Red, I also use red. Yeah, that's handy. But anyway, so with the exposure, we've pretty much prepared it for coloring. Uh, I do go a step further though. I like to adjust the gamma correction too, just to make the lines a bit darker so that we got kind of 
areas of pure black in these lines. Um, but really, that's just a matter of taste. And then uh, my my personal workflow is I go to the channels tab. And if you control click this white square here next to RGB, that's going to select, make a selection of all the white that is currently visible uh, on your canvas. And then with control shift I, I can invert that to select the black line art instead. And with this, we can make a solid color layer. And because we have a selection, it's going to set the mask to be our selection. And if I just disable the old line art, uh, you can see this is the, the layer we've just created. And the, the plus side to this is that we can change the color to whatever we want. And we can use this mask for whatever we want. We can make it into a, we can transfer the mask to a layer group. And then anything inside that group is going to be just line art. So we can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Um, <clears throat> one final tip is after you have made your RGB selection and inverted it, so you have your line art selected now, I like to go to select, modify, smooth. And then I just smooth that by two pixels. And what that does is when we make our mm, layer, our solid color version of the line art, we now have like a more pleasant look to it. It's, it's smoother by two pixels, who would have thought? And I just, that's, it's a matter of personal taste again, but I personally prefer it over this. So here we have um, just the raw, and on paper, textured line. And then here we have the smoothed one, which looks a little bit more pleasant to my eyes anyway. Realistically, you're going to be playing on it at uh, a much smaller scale. So the difference might not be so great, but there's an option. I thought I'd throw it in at the end of the video. Uh, of course, after you've got these layers, whether you have the solid color version or you have multiply version. You just want to put all of your color layers underneath and then you can start coloring in beneath the line art. Yeah, so hopefully that was reasonably concise and not too rambly and uh, I feel like there's enough detail, um, enough options for everyone out there. Um, let me know if you have any further questions in the comments. Otherwise, enjoy. Have a good one and best of luck with your creative works.